What's up guys, Tim Little, Matt Allen. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin and welcome back to our Holiday Buyer's Guide series. Today, we are covering everything jig fishing. Jig fishing is a giant category. I mean, you're talking about micro little jigs that you can throw on super light line, you're talking about giant flipping jigs, swim jigs. The category is huge. So what we've done to simplify this is we went category by category and really narrowed it down to two, two jigs per category or even less in yeah. one case. Uh, and then just a couple of rods to help you here. The idea of these buyer's guides, if you're just coming in, you have missed a ton of videos already. Uh, but the idea here is one, to help anglers make educated decisions because you have so many options. So we're trying to give you our key confidence baits. And then also for you to be able to share this with your loved ones before the holidays, if there's something specific you want, it's very hard for loved ones to shop for an angler. So this is a way that they can use the video description where all these things are linked, specific colors, trailers, it's all there and easy to find even for somebody who doesn't fish regularly. Tim, why don't you kick us off on the finesse end and we'll go from there. Sure. Like Matt said, jig fishing, the category is enormous. I mean, there are so many different jigs, different types of heads, different shapes, different, you know, there's so much stuff. So we really tried to simplify it for each category, little subcategory. I'm going to kick it off with micro jigs. I'm talking little itty bitty micro jigs. These things are so much fun to throw. Uh, this is the little Kitek right there. That's a tungsten head. Uh, where I really like throwing these is ultra clear water, deep, you know, 25, 30, 45 feet of water. Um, you get that added sensitivity with the tungsten. The other one in this category, so we went, when we were picking these, we wanted to pick certain jigs that stu stood out to us that we use in our fishing. Right. Uh, I went one with a weed guard and one without. This is the Nishini micro jig. What's cool about this jig, it is hand tight. It's got a hand wrapped wire keeper. Really cool skirt, textured skirt. But where I use these jigs, like I said, ultra clear water, pressured fish. You know, downsizing your line, downsizing your bait. When you're throwing a, a micro jig like this, you're not throwing a big gap of a hook. So you can throw seven, eight, 10 pound, 12 pound fluorocarbon mm -hmm. and don't have to worry about not getting good hook penetration. As far as trailers, keep it really, really simple. A lot of the TRD, the Ned stuff works great. This is the, this is the TRD Bugs, little beaver style bait. Pairs up great with that size jig. I'll rig, I'll rig it for you while you're going. The other one I like to throw is going to be the craw, the TRD craw. Again, just a perfect size for these micro jigs. Again, clear water, pressured fish, downsize. If, <laughs> if you pull perfect. up, if you pull up to the launch ramp, a lot of times I always look at the launch ramp. I look, at, I'm looking for for bait fish and I'm looking for crawdads. Mm -hmm. You, a lot of times you can see those crawdads are really, really small and that's where these jigs really come into play. Moving over. Yeah, just keep, keep going. going. Yeah. Okay. This is gonna be a finesse jig. Here we go. Micro jig, finesse jig, just a little bit bigger. Uh, where I like to throw this style jig, see the, the hook size, the hook gap compared to the micro jig? completely different. This is still a finesse jig compared to the other jigs we're yeah, going to talk compared about to that hook. here in a second. But where I like throwing this guy, you can see half the skirt's trimmed. This still has a fairly stout, fairly substantial weed guard. I like throwing this around standing timber mm -hmm. and dock pilings. Mm -hmm. Downsize, it's still not a full-size jig, but it's got a good hook in it, and you can fish this on your basic medium medium heavy rods. You don't need yeah. a broomstick. And then I have that paired up. That's already paired up. That's the pocket net bait pocket chunk right there. This is just an all around craw daddy crayfish that's, size profile. That's a good one. Uh, you might as well wrap up the finesse. Knock, yeah, I'll knock might out. as well, yeah. So coming from the West Coast, we fish a lot of ultra clear water, you know, 
20 to 30 foot of visibility, Highland Reservoirs. That's where I really like throwing some kind of finesse football jig. Got one here paired up with a trailer right there. That's the Yamamoto twin tail grub on there. So finesse football, football style head comes through uh, mud and rock, just a lot better. It's got a wider face on it. You don't get hung up as easily, but now you can go up in sizes. Now you can throw half ounce. You can throw a little heavier for those deeper fish. The other one I like to throw, this guy right here, this is the Bass Patrol. This is a three quarter ounce. So I talked about fishing deep, fishing clear water. This is a must. This bait actually has a living rubber skirt. Works completely different than your standard skirt. This in cold water is just gonna sit there and just kind of move. This is a great cold water jig. This is a jig that'll work right now. Paired that up with, like I said, the Yamamoto twin tail grub but that is my micro jig finesse jig finesse football jig lineup nice as far as gear my everyday rod for this category is going to be the the x pride this is actually the 610 medium heavy mm -hmm. Paired up with fluorocarbon if you want. Again, fish in clear water. I like to throw, if I'm throwing braid, I'm going to throw braid to a long leader, you know, a 20 foot leader. So they're not seeing that connection knot. Uh, but this is a, a light enough rod that you can fish these little guys on. But it's also got enough backbone that you can set a three quarter ounce living rubber jig uh, in deep water. So again, that is my everyday combo as far as. I guess I should have told you. As far as <laughs> as far as like a budget jig combo, Bass X 7.4 Heavy paired up with an SLX. That's a combo that's going to be right around $200. Yep. And you're going to have an awesome jig setup. All right. Is it my turn? Uh, let's wait a little bit. All right. Okay. Now you can go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> on the on the I guess I'm taking the power end of this thing. Uh, let's start with swim jigs. That's a completely different category. Uh, swim jigs, I try to keep really simple. There's really three that I personally use throughout the year, but I could easily toss one of them out. So I narrowed it down to two. My main swim jig is the California swim jig. This is a bait that I had a huge hand in designing years ago. Uh, I fish this in the heavy sizes almost always three quarter ounce, once in a while, half ounce. But what I love about this jig, it's a giant full profile and it has a gaff <laughs> of a hook. That's a no jack hook. The California swim jig, I mean, you could stop a truck with it. It's insane. What I like to do with this jig is I pair it up to a big trailer. We'll get to that in a second. I fish it on heavy line, sometimes straight braid. If I'm putting a leader on there, it's 20 pound at a minimum. And I like to send this swim jig straight through cover. Where other baits go around grass patches, I take the three quarter ounce California swim jig and plow it right through the center and just bust it through. Fish aren't used to that. Fish hide in cover and ambush out. When you come plowing right through their house, the big ones get <laughs> mad. And that they is light a, it up. That is a four wheel drive style swim jig. You could throw that right through your bull rushes, your through every toolies, everything. Yes. It is just, it just goes. The other one, more traditional. This is the Dirty Jigs Swim Jig. That's just what it's called, the Swim Jig. Still a heavy wire hook, but it's more of a standard heavy wire hook. You're not trying to stop a moving car with it. This is a killer all around jig that I'll throw in three eighths and half ounce. Uh, and it's more of that fishing over, above, around cover. Uh, I throw this a lot. Like if I'm on uh, a tidal system, you'll get that channel on the inside of the grass line right up against the bank. I can take a three eighths or a half and fish it right down that channel on the inside of the grass. I pair them up to very specific trailers because the power of a swim jig is finding a trailer that will make the skirt move and flow. If this trailer just shakes and the skirt just lays on it, there's no value in it being a swim jig. It might as well just be a bare swim bait. But if you can get the skirt to move, 
that's the ticket. Secondary action, secondary action. So one of them is the D Walker, the River of the Sea D Walker. If I'm using a three quarter ounce, I use the larger size, the 120. If I'm using a half ounce or smaller, I use the 100 size, there's two sizes. That one will shake a jig hard. You get a ton of movement out of that jig. The other one is a gambler and that's the easy swimmer. I fell in love with this one two years ago uh, and I stumbled on it simply because I didn't have anything else with me. And I took a flipping jig, tried to make a swim jig out of it. And it worked so well that I started putting them on my swim jigs. But look at that pairing. That's the gold rush color paired on the back of a bluegill swim jig. I mean, you're there. That is a big fish bait. Moving on to pitching style jigs. Pitching style jigs are more of an arky style head. So a rounded head. These are the jigs that will come through anything. They are not the best flipping jig because they have a little more rounded head instead of a pointed head. They're not the best offshore structure jig because they hang up a little bit more than a football. But here's what they are. They are the best at doing everything. If you're going to own one jig, just one, hands down, it's a pitching jig. If you want to get crazy and own jigs in every category, then sometimes that pitching jig gets set aside for something that is specific to a category. But if you just want a jig, you're like, I don't know what I'm up against, but I'm taking a jig with me. You're taking a pitching jig literally every time. So the standard pitching jig has a strong hook in it. I tip, Here's one that's rigged. Typically throw it in a half ounce. That's just my all around bread and butter. Uh, and then I'm gonna pair that up with two different styles of trailer. Either a moving trailer, if it's moving, this is a pack of slim, and I'll get to this in a second anyway, but that one kicks and swims. The other one is a Reaction Innovations Beaver. That's dead action. In other words, it's just profile. When it's on the bottom, it's not doing anything, but it looks really good. The profile is dialed. I use one or the other. The colder the water, the more I want that dead action. The warmer the water, the more I want movement out of that trailer. The other jig in this category, this is the compact pitching jig. So still an Arky style head. I don't know if you guys will be able to see, I'm gonna pull the trailer off this. There it is with a pack of chunk on it because this is a smaller jig. But I'm gonna pull that pack of chunk off here so you can see the size difference. If you're looking for a skipping jig, that is the style head you want. That arky style, that more of like a skipping rock style. So it's a way smaller hook, way smaller skirt, thinner skirt. The difference here, both are pitching jigs. Pitching jig, compact pitching jig. The pitching jig is my all around jig, but sometimes I'm in clear water. Sometimes I'm in murky water. If I'm faced with clear water, I immediately go to a compact pitching because I can set this hook all the way down to 12 pound line. No problem. If I've got murkier water and line doesn't matter, then I'm throwing the other one on 15, 20, if it's muddy, 25, because I can just hammer them with it. So that's how I make the decision between the sizes. So you know, is your, is your lake typically murky or is it typically clear and you just adjust accordingly? Last category for you, flipping jigs. Flipping jigs are going to have more of a pointed head. The purpose for that head is that when you're in grass and you pull a jig into it, if you had a football jig in grass, the grass just clumps around it. That flipping head will nose in and it will split the grass out of its way and it comes right through the center. Same thing with cattails, tulies, bull rushes, anything like that. You can pull a flipping jig right through because it just pushes them, splits them, and comes through. It has a much stronger weed guard, so you're not hanging that hook point up. As a result, you need much stouter gear to fish them. So again, we have two. The first one, this is the no jack flipping jig. Same hook that's in that California swim jig. It is a gaff. I mean, that hook is so strong it's incredible. 
if I'm flipping in places where I might run into a big one, let's say a seven plus pounder, there's a real shot that I might be flipping along and all of a sudden set up on a monster. I will use a no jack hands down every time. Not that it's not great for catching one and two pounders, but it's overkill. You're, you're not going to bend it out on a nine pounder. You sure don't need it for a two pounder, right? So for that, I drop down to the Canterbury flipping jig. Huge difference in hook size, but still a flipping style head. Look at the difference in these hooks. The wire size is more than twice as thick here. So the idea, head design, still the same, both flipping heads. If I'm fishing a pond, or if I live in a state where I know my big fish that I'm going to run into this year is like a six pounder or smaller, you don't need a no jack jig. You need a Canterbury flipping jig because it's more appropriate. You can throw it on lighter line, lighter gear. You can have more fun with it. And you're not punching a giant hole in every one pounder that picks that jig up. But on the other end, if you know that you might run into a monster, set that one down, get a no jack and go. Now for the flipping style jig, I like a trailer with movement. So that pack of slim four inch has become my main trailer. There's one set up right there. That's a trailer that's got a great profile, but it also has a great kick because I am flipping cover with this. So I want it swimming on the way down and on the way back out. You'll get a lot of bites on the drop and then I work it. And when I go to reel it out, sometimes they eat it then too. If you have swim, they eat it while you're reeling it out of there. If you don't, usually they just let it go. So it just adds value to that cast. There's a longer period of time where you might get bit. My favorite all around jig rod will end there and then I'm gonna need to take a breath. I've got one jig rod that is just my baby for all these bigger style jigs. And that is the Mega Bass Orochi Brailleist. Uh, given a choice, I pair that up to a Shimano Metanium and this combo is unreal. This, this rod is the best action I've ever found for working bigger jigs because a jig, there's a lot of techniques where you can kind of get away with a rod, right? You've got an all around rod and it will work. Uh, a jig is one of those where the bait weighs so much and it's often on the outside of their face, right? They get hooked in the lip, weights outside and they come up and they're thrashing. It can rip itself out. And the industry leans to very extra fast rods. I don't agree with that for a jig. I love a little bit more moderate of a rod, uh, a rod that will load up a little more through the mid. The reason why is that when a big one comes up head shake in that jig, if you've only loaded the tip section of the rod and they head shake, it loads, unloads, loads, unloads during the head shake. Well, when it unloads, they can throw it. But if you've loaded the midsection of the rod too, their head shake is never long enough for that entire rod to unload. So the rod is always maintaining pressure and the amount of fish that you will get in the boat skyrockets. So I'm very specific about my jig rod. I completely agree with Tim on both of those. This is my favorite rod for bigger jigs. That 610 medium heavy is an amazing rod for smaller jigs. And then St. Croix naturally has those more moderate actions and they're perfect uh, for just jigs in general. All right, I think I'm done. <laughs> I'm sorry I said you can go. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, there it is. Uh, Try to simplify it as much as possible. You know, like I said earlier, the jig category is enormous. There's so many different types of heads, so many different trailers and colors and all that stuff. Down below in the video description, we will link our favorite colors in each of these categories. Yep. We'll give you two or three. Really trying to simplify it for you. Make it easy for your loved ones to get you the stuff that you need. Uh, and then we'll link the rods and reels, the combos, line, that stuff down there as well. If you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. We'll try to answer those as soon as possible uh, before the, the sale's over or before the holidays are over. Holidays are and, over, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you guys like this type of video, give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and we will see you on the next video.